Via telephone, the majority whip in the Senate, Senator Ryan Weld, also a candidate for attorney general in the state. Ryan, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me. Great to have you with us. Uh, can I assume that you're not calling from Seattle? Uh, no, I'm not in Seattle. I am, I am in Brook County. Yeah, you're one of the few that's not in Seattle. What this delegation talking to Amazon, I counted 43 people in the photograph yesterday. So that's a huge well, delegation for, uh, to go to talk to Amazon. So. We figured that I didn't need to go because my house was very well known with the number of packages my wife had delivered here every day. So we were a known commodity, so I didn't need to go. What would we do without Prime? So. When they got out there, they, they said, oh, you guys are from that state where Ryan Weld lives. We, we, we know that, uh, that route very well. They got us on the frequent flyer list. Yeah, sure. that's, that's nice. I think a lot of us fit that description at times, too. Every day. Every day there's a box outside, <laughs> and none of them have been ordered by yours truly. And, I just have to say. And some of them come all, all hours of the night. We had one last <laughs> night around 9, 30, 10 o'clock last night. So they don't yeah. stop working, Bill. Yeah. They, they do don't not. stop working. They do not. Uh, have you gotten any updates from them, Senator Weld, in regards to the progress they're having and uh, trying to get some data centers in West Virginia and such? You know, I've seen the news stories and just heard bits and pieces here and there, but I know that they're extremely busy with their agenda out there. Uh, I know, you know, they've, they've got a lot of travel behind them and, and some ahead of them, and but I haven't had the chance to, to talk specifics yet, but I'm sure we're, we'll sit down and chat when they come back, and I'm down in Charleston next. I want to talk to you about several things in this conversation today, including your candidacy for attorney general, but also about an editorial that you recently wrote in regards to artificial intelligence. Uh, you served as an intelligence officer in the Air Force, and uh, we've gone through your history with cybersecurity in the past. You feel free to highlight that again uh, as we continue this conversation. Uh, but what are some of your main concerns with AI, Senator Weld? Well, I think that, you know, over the past couple of weeks, months, we've all become concerned with a lot of the stories that we've seen in the news, particularly towards, you know, people being, their voice being cloned or a, a video, what's known as a deep fake, uh, being made of them and being used for, we'll say, nefarious purposes. You know, in my, in, in the op-ed, I highlighted an, a woman in Arizona, I got a phone call from her daughter who was screaming and crying, saying that she had been kidnapped. And, and the woman knew that it was her daughter's voice on the end of the line. And her daughter was on a ski trip with friends, so she didn't know where the daughter was at. And there were, <clears throat> a gentleman got on the phone and made demands for money. And if they didn't pay, he was going to take her to Mexico. And so the woman started to, you know, as you can imagine, become very panicked and trying to figure out what she could do to get her daughter back. Well, it ended up that it wasn't her daughter. It was her daughter's voice that had been cloned through AI program and used to call her mom. And it was so real that it faked out her own mother. And so that's something that, that we've all seen in the news. The other there are military applications that, that have people concerned. And, you know, I, there was an article yesterday in Politico where Senator Manchin was talking in the uh, Center Armed Services Committee about AI and that he's concerned and so are other members of the committee that we're falling behind when it comes to AI development to China. I mean, that's a real threat. I mean, the, the applications of, of AI in the military realm are almost unimaginable, just what it can be used for. And, and Admiral, I'm sure you, you're aware of this. And so if we were to fall behind China on the development of that, I mean, that could have some serious real world implications. But the reason that I wanted to write the op-ed about it isn't just to talk about you know, these big ticket scare items. I mean, that's, but it had a purpose to talk about what the AG's office could do in respect to AI. You know, I just mentioned the identity theft portion of that and a woman uh, being convinced that she was talking to her daughter and, and, and that could be used to take somebody's credit card number, that, that it, a voice clone, a deep fake could be used to obtain information that could t steal someone's identity. Well, the AG's office here in West Virginia, he, handles identity theft. It, it, it is a repository of information of what to do to try to prevent that from happening, but also what to do if it does happen and your identity is stolen. Another part of what the AG's office does is consumer protection. It has the consumer protection division. And so I wrote about in that op-ed 
you know, there are actions that several other states have taken to give their AGs the authority to, to be able to protect their citizens from discriminatory practices resulting from decisions being made purely uh, by artificial intelligence. And so the AG's office, I believe here in West Virginia, is going to have a pretty important role when it comes to uh, things that AI is going to affect. And so the next AG, I feel, is going to really have to have a background in this realm, uh, have experience with cybersecurity, and, and be ready to face these challenges and protect West Virginia. And that's why I wrote it. Bill. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Senator. Uh, a couple of three things. Morning, uh, one, you mentioned some big ticket uh, uh, alarms, uh, the military and the like. I think 2024 political race is also going to fall into that realm. There's a lot of opportunity for mischief to have a candidate say something they never said. So that'd be something yep. to check out. Uh, but going back to the uh, AG office, uh, there's two parts to uh, IA, and one is policy and one is technology. Uh, can you, uh, you can implement policy, uh, but you have to wait till the development uh, R&D for the technology. How would you ensure you can keep up to date with technology as well as putting policy in place? So we have, here in the state of West Virginia, we have a chief information security officer, the, the CISO, they call it. And we worked with that office this past session in formulating legislation. And, and I was on in talking about this before the session started about banning uh, TikTok, which is owned by a Chinese uh, software company on state-owned uh, tablets and cell phones, systems, that kind of thing. And so... Working with the CISO, we formulated a bill that just didn't say we're banning TikTok. It was about implementing rules that allowed, our, again, our chief information security officer to promulgate the rules to stay ahead of all this so we didn't have to slow down and, you know, while we drafted legislation and it enacted into law, work through the legislative process. And so I think the AG would have to, to do the same with, the CISO that the legislature did this past session in always trying to, to formulate things that give the state the ability to stay flexible, stay nimble, keep try to keep ahead of these threats and not always have to, to wait on the, the legislative process to draft a bill to address every threat as it came up. But instead, that's, and that's how other states have handled it, and that's how they handled TikTok as well. Okay. Okay, I uh, go ahead, Maria. Then I have I'd like to come back to the election uh, or the AG race in a couple minutes. That's fine, Maria. And, and so I was going to ask Senator. Clearly, you've done homework on the AG's office, what it has accomplished, and what you hope to accomplish um, in that position. Um, is your sense? We hear a lot from a lot of elected officials and would be elected officials that about the right sizing of government. Do you think mm -hmm. the attorney general's office is right sized in West Virginia? Um, do you have a sense of that? And uh, if so, or if not, um, what would you do to make that happen? So the AG's office has about 185 employees total. Uh, and then of that 185, approximately 85 are attorneys. Uh, again, seeing it from the outside, uh, I'm not in that office, but seeing it from the outside, talking with our current attorney general and, and talking with people who work in AG offices across the country, the biggest challenge is always recruiting attorneys and trying to keep the office fully staffed where it needs to be with lawyers that want to do the job or are capable of doing the job, want to serve the people of the state. Because you have some of those offices, like the, uh, the, the Medicaid fraud unit, that's all federally funded. So the lawyers that work in that shop can't go work in another department or help out on cases, anything else. You have the, the lawyers that are assigned to DHHR. They're technically being paid through DHHR, so they're kind of siloed in what they're doing there. And so that's the biggest challenge, I think, is that does the office have the right number of employees? I can't say for certain. It seems to be operating well and, and doing what it needs to do now, uh, certainly. But I think that challenge is always recruiting attorneys and having the right people in those slots, uh, especially the, the solicitor general position, which is the lawyer that 
appears and argues on behalf of the, the state in federal and state courts. Come to the lawyers aspect. What about the technicians? I'm thinking specifically about cybersecurity. Is the current AG office doing enough for uh, current cybersecurity protection as they should be doing? So the the technicians would probably work under the the, the CISO, the office I mentioned earlier, and and my hope would be to coordinate with that office. If I am fortunate enough to be the next AG of the state, again, to always kind of stay ahead of that threat. Uh, right now, um, the AG's office, I, I, I can't speak to, to current things that they're working on with AI because this is a very fast, rapidly developing uh, issue. Uh, this really has kind of just taken a, a, a place at the front of everybody's minds probably within the past, I would say, two months, three months. And so I'm sure that they are probably already encountering this issue when it comes to something like identity theft. We kind of probably have just seen the tip of the iceberg of, of what the real depth of the issue will be and the challenges that it's going to present to, to people here in West Virginia. Okay. Okay, to shift to the candidate discussion now. Right? Certainly okay, is. Yeah. Uh, uh, Senator, I've been looking uh, with some interest about uh, you and uh, Mike Stewart. There may be others, but the two of you seem to be most uh, most prominent at the stage uh, with your race for attorney general. Uh, your ver your written platform I find to be very very similar. Uh, the fact there's quite a bit of overlap uh, with your written platform. However, uh, your your more verbal position are quite different than each other. Uh, one, uh, uh, Senator Sturt has taken more of a uh, uh, cultural cultural uh, argument than what I think you have. Uh, how do you reconcile what what we see in the written platform and your oral positions? It's a very good question, and I think when people are looking at the, the Attorney General's office and what they want their next AG to be. You know, I think that they want somebody who has the experience to do the job. And I think that my prior military service, the lessons in leadership that I learned during that time, the, the key principle of service before self, that it's not about you, it's about doing the job and getting things done. You know, that is something that, that I think lends me to fill that role in looking for somebody who's got that experience. Somebody who's well versed in state government knows how the state government operates. You know, I did one term in the House, so two legislative sessions, and I've now completed seven sessions in the Senate to almost two full terms. And so I've gotten to get a, a very good understanding of how state government works, what the AG's office does in particular, what it doesn't do. And so I think that's a very important aspect of my background that people would look at and find me to be a, a good fit for, for the next, to be the next AG. Somebody who's been very effective at what they do. It's, it's hard to put into words when you're, you know, you got a blurb on a website about why you should be the next attorney general. Well, I think that the, the people of the state want someone who's been effective at their job. And as a legislator, I've been very effective. You know, I've gotten a, a number of, of big ticket items done over the years that have been able to work with people, get things done, you know, I go down to Beckley uh, later this week. I'm going to meet with the folks there to, to learn more about their Veterans Corps program. It was a big piece of legislation for me a couple of years ago because former Supreme Court Justice Lawfrey disbanded that program. And I worked with the current iteration of the Supreme Court and got that back into law. And so I, if you look at my record of being in the legislature, the things that I've taken on, because I said I want to do this on behalf of my constituents and the state, I've been able to get that done. And so being effective in what you do, I think, is something that's very important for the next position and something that people find that I've fortunately been able to, to get done and be. Uh, uh, Mike Stewart has also been very, uh, very vocal that he would like to increase the powers of the AG. Uh, do you endorse that sentiment? No, I, I would be adamantly opposed uh, to that. What he talked about was, taking the prosecutorial powers away from our locally elected county prosecutors, uh, taking powers of criminal investigative uh, powers from our locally elected sheriffs, and centralizing that in Charleston. And on a philosophical level, 
you know, I'm adamantly opposed against expanding the bureaucracy, increasing the size of government, sending more power to Charleston. I just don't see why we, we, we would be weaponizing the state government like that. And so I'm, I'm adamantly opposed to that position because, you know, we elect our prosecutors, we elect our sheriffs, we have local police departments that already do these things, that already indict people, that already, you know, impanel grand juries, that conduct criminal investigations. And so why we would be increasing the size of, of Charleston's bureaucracy at the expense of local government is just not something I would support. Our local prosecutors agree with you, Senator Weld, by the way. Yeah, and that's a very compel that's a very compelling argument, and I think I'll, most of the folks would resonate with that argument. I do not hear it vocalized or it's clearly stated uh, prior to right now than what you just did. Well, it's just I was a prosecutor. I was a, an assistant prosecutor for a number of years here in Brook County, and I loved it. I loved that job. I truly enjoy criminal law. You're in the courtroom you know, several times a week, but that's not the job that I want to do as attorney general. And so, I, I, you know, you need a constitutional amendment to give prosecutorial powers to the attorney general's office. The Supreme Court has been clear about that over the years. And so I, I know what the job is. I know what it does. And that's why I want to do it. I don't want to change it, increase government, increase the bureaucracy. I just want to do the job as what it is now. Senator uh, Ryan Weld, our guest around the program, he is the Majority Whip and the Vice Chair of Judiciary 2. Maria, go right ahead. Um, so the current uh, Attorney General Senator um, has had a very clear focus on the opiate crisis in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you, uh, not just the crisis, but obviously the um, the lawsuits involved, the, the money obtained, and, um, and, and where that goes in terms of treatment and so forth. Is that something you'll intend to, um, to keep uh, a focus on? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so as a, my experience as a prosecutor lent me to get involved and do a lot of work on the substance abuse issue because I, I see that, Maria, as the Perhaps the biggest challenge this state faces, because if, if someone, if, an, if a prospective employer wants to relocate to West Virginia or expand here, if they can't get a drug-free workforce, then they're going to pass. Because if they don't feel that they can get the employees to do the job, why come here? And so being able to mitigate that crisis as much as we can is, I think, one of the most important missions that our state government can have right now. And so carrying on the work that Attorney General Morrissey has done, I think, is a very large component of that. This is a, you know, we have one opportunity with this settlement to do all that we can to make things right. And so I have done a lot of work on this issue, both on the criminal side, but also on the treatment side, uh, and because you cannot, you can't arrest your way out of uh, the opioid crisis that we have right now. And so the work that I've done, I think, kind of lends me to continue that going into the AG's office, uh, working with the, the West Virginia First Foundation and ensuring that the, the settlement money is used appropriately and used in a way that will help us get out of the current crisis we're in. How, how is this committee that the I believe the governor appoints and otherwise filled in, how is this going to uh, be finished in regards to its appointments and how will it proceed? Do you have detail on that? So the, the governor will make the, the selections. The individuals will then be um, – they will be confirmed by the Senate, and then they'll start doing their work. And as part of the legislation, uh, you know, they have guidelines, and, and what was in the, the legislation comes from the settlement agreement itself. They have guidelines as to how this money is to be spent, where it's to be spent, uh, in what manner. I mean there's all, kind of, all kinds of, again, guidelines to make sure that it's done appropriately. And so as that uh, committee you know, begins the process of being stood up, as members are identified uh, to fill those roles that, that would be appointed and then confirmed by us in the Senate, it's really gonna have, I'm hoping, and that's why I, I sponsored that legislation that created the foundation, 
a transformative change here in West Virginia because, again, this is, I think, a, a, just a generational opportunity to make right what has been done to the state over the years because of addiction. Senator, running for statewide office requires quite a bit of funding. Uh, do you have uh, specific action committees working for you? And if you do, would you be uh, inclined to say who they are? Well, I don't have, you know, action committees uh, out there. You know, there's the, the committee to elect Ryan Weld, which is where people, you know, can make their contributions. And, and that's the, the our main account. And you know, we've got a uh, what's on Friday, I think, is the last day of the quarter. And so we've got a and, and I haven't been in this race the entire quarter. I missed about a month of it. So we've had two months of this quarter, and, and you're right, it is a, an expensive proposition to, to run statewide. Um, and so we've got, what at this point in time, essentially 10 months to continue to, to get out there and meet as many people as possible and, and raise as much money as possible. And, and we're definitely doing both of those. My wife and I, I think I've put maybe 2,400 miles in my car in a little over two weeks at this point in time. We're going to head out this afternoon uh, we're going to be in Roan County, then we'll be in Beckley, coming out to, to your guys, to your neck of the woods on Sunday. A couple of parades on the 4th of July, so we're hitting the trail, and it's been a great experience so far. We were in Randolph County on Saturday at, at Colton Days, saw a great Elvis impersonator there, so we've been everywhere, and we'll continue to be everywhere. <laughs> Can't see enough good Elvis impersonators, <laughs> yeah, You man. absolutely cannot. Michael yeah, Hoover no. was the best that uh, that I'd ever I've, I've ever seen. He played at Roseanne's wedding yeah. back in the <laughs> '90s or whatever that was. Uh, Senator Weld, where will you be uh, locally here in the Eastern Panhandle Sunday? We're going to be in Berkeley Springs on Sunday. I guess there's uh, a big fireworks display. Very nice, uh, right there by where the the school is uh, the, and the what's the restaurant, the, the Canary Grill. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're gonna we're gonna be out there with some folks that we know and just get out and, and you know meet everybody and hopefully see a good show hopefully the weather holds ask them if you can drink some bath water while you're out there <laughs> yeah. they'll, they'll know what that means yeah well, do you have plans to move in a little bit farther east to uh, berkeley and jefferson county in the near future yep we were planning uh some ep days in july to come out uh said so, you know when you travel a good distance like that from the panhandle from the northern panhandle uh, to come out, you want to plan as, as much as possible during the day, get to meet as many people, you know, get a good lunch group together. So we're planning a couple of those days uh, for July to, to come out. Um, you know, fortunate now to know some great people, some of whom you all know. Uh, one is a, a nominee for the Supreme Court here, uh, Charlie Trump, the, mm -hmm. the man who I've been the vice chair of his Judiciary Committee for the past several years and just a, a great guy. And so you know, lucky to, you know, over the years, it's, it's being in the legislature for the past, you know, what, nine years at this point, really been fortunate to, to make some great contacts and meet a lot of you know, great friends across the state. So we'll take advantage of that over the next couple of months. Well, very nice. That drive from the northern panhandle to the eastern or back and forth is one of those fun, you're in West Virginia, you're out of West Virginia, you're in West Virginia, you're out of West Virginia, and then you're back in West Virginia again. You keep going in and out of the state when you travel those panhandles, Ryan. I know I-68 well. <laughs> hey, have a great day. I do appreciate your time this morning. Thank you all. Have a great 4th of July. Thanks, you too. too. Senator Ryan Wells.